Young Turks now has audio, the TYT audio network, podcasts of some of your favorite shows and new shows, including one with Nina Turner, former Ohio State Senator. She's gonna do We the People with Nina Turner, talking about equality and justice and seeing that through the eyes of regular Americans who are affected by politics and policy. Everybody check it out at tyt.com slash audio. Representative Steve King has uh, just retweeted a well-known neo-Nazi, or at least an individual who is known to be a neo-Nazi. And the Republican Party has remained largely silent about it. In fact, uh, when Talking Points Memo reached out to specific individuals in the GOP, they refused to uh, respond to uh, requests for a statement. Now, the tweet in question has to do with uh, Italy and, and the political situation in Italy and migration to Italy. But before I get to that, let me explain who had initially tweeted this and who Steve King retweeted. It's a man by the name of Mark Collette, uh, and uh, he isn't quiet about who he is. Uh, he called himself a Nazi sympathizer, expressed admir admiration for Adolf Hitler, and was the subject of a 2002 documentary called Young Nazi and Proud. So with that said, now that you know a little bit about Colette, let's take a quick look at the tweet that Steve King had retweeted. And uh, it's about the situation in Italy. Uh, there is this, you know, there's this trend of countries wanting to reject migration. That's certainly the case in Italy where a, uh, you know, where populist right-wing politicians are, are certainly gaining a lot of momentum. And so it was an anti-immigration tweet. And uh, King has said that, you know, he's not necessarily against this line of thinking. Uh, let's give you some more details. Uh, Colette joined former KKK Grand Wizard David Duke for an hour-long discussion on, per Duke's website, the massive violence that continues to be inflicted on the world by the Jewish-dominated left. So he's not hiding who he really is, okay? And Steve King a representative here in the United States openly retweets this guy. And in the past, he's doubled down on his own racist statements. Uh, so let's go to that. Uh, in December, he tweeted, diversity is not our strength, and attributed a quote to the right-wing Hungarian prime minister, uh, Viktor Orban, mixing cultures will not lead to a higher quality of life, but a lower one. And uh, he had said some pretty terrible things about uh, Mexican immigrants as well, stuff about them hiding cantaloupes in their calves with drugs in them. Oh, right, they, they, have, uh, they have calves the size of cantaloupes. Right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so this is exactly what he said. For every undocumented immigrant who's a valedictorian, there's another 100 out there who weigh 130 pounds, and they've got calves the size of cantaloupes because they're hauling 75 pounds of marijuana across the desert. Well, actually, the statistics bear out that they do quite well, both academically and in terms of the employment records and, and all the rest. They uh, overwhelming percentage of, of, of immigrants to this country are actually uh, in better shape than the average American. And so these comments were really in relation to that. They were trying to, he was trying to say, well, for every valedictorian, there are a bunch of guys hauling drugs over the over the border, and they've got calves the size of cantaloupe. Right. It's a way of, of minimizing and also delegitimizing a very legitimate point about the success of immigrants and the product productivity of Im immigrants who come to the United States and actually add a lot of value to our economy, to our culture. It's just it's it's this. He's just he has this hateful streak, and it's not new, which is why I'm not surprised that he continues to tweet these things and say these things. It's just that in the past, Republicans were much more willing to denounce this type of rhetoric, whereas now they just kind of uh, either support it or are inc incredibly complicit. Uh, by the way, King has also said that America should not apologize for slavery, has suggested that the country's first black president was born in Kenya, and has argued that most undocumented immigrants are drug mules, as you heard from the comment earlier. So. Talking Points Memo, uh, a reporter named Mark, uh, Mark Schumann specifically reached out to um, a majority leader, Kevin Mc McCarthy, uh, House Speaker Paul Ryan, and also the Republican Campaign Committee and the Republican National Committee, just for comment. Someone, just someone, can anyone denounce what Steve King is saying openly, transparently? No. No one uh, returned That is, uh, first of all, it is striking when you stack up all the white supremacist crap 
one tweet after another, one retweet after another. It is pretty startling that uh, an American legislator could get away with such hateful language and such hateful thought. But putting that aside for a moment, it is truly remarkable that you can't get anyone to denounce it. Uh, Paul Ryan came out with like this lukewarm sort of uh, kind of just wanting to stand apart from it, kind of the way he does with Trump, you mm -hmm. know. Well, I just don't want to, I forget the, the actual quote from Ryan, but he doesn't, he doesn't denounce it in strong terms, which is right. really what you'd think a politician would do in this country, unless, unless the GOP sees the winning strategy of hate politics. That's right. And after all, hate politics has kind of carried the day so far. You're, that's a great point because politicians, slimy politicians, uh, are typically not leaders. Being a leader means putting yourself in an uncomfortable position and, and possibly uh, threatening your own political future by standing up for the right thing. That's what a real leader does. But right now what we're seeing with the GOP is a number of representatives and senators who fall in line with the Trump rhetoric uh, toward minorities and undocumented immigrants because it's the politically savvy thing to do at the moment. I, you have this wave of right-wing hatred toward immigrants, toward black people. I mean, it's, it's open. It's out in the open. We shouldn't apologize for slavery. You're not going to condemn those types of statements. I mean, it's, that statement is indefensible on any level. It's indefensible morally. It's indefensible ethically, and it's indefensibly just in terms of indefensible just in terms of the facts, the facts of the nation, what slavery did, the the awful pernicious elements that were birthed by slavery. It was a horrible part of this history. So even if you don't care about black people, even if you don't care about this this horror that was perpetrated on on this population, it's indefensible intellectually in terms of this country and what it did. Uh, and then you have, and then, and then throw, throw on that, throw, throw all his anti-Semitic comments onto the fire. And the incredible thing is you will still have people go on shows, like former employees here who have gone on Joe Rogan's show, claim that there is no racism in the right wing. There's no racism in the Republican Party whatsoever. We just read you comments and showed you retweets from a Republican representative who is currently serving in the GOP. I mean, okay. Well, I mean, what, we could live in this weird fantasy world where we deny that this exists, but it exists. It's out in the open. It's brazen, and it's a winning political strategy right now for the GOP. And I think that's the real reason that you don't see uh, more in the way of a denouncing of these kinds of comments. And in the run-up to the election, you'll remember Trump was sort of an outcast, or they sort of gave him the side eye in the GOP. Now they see how Trump is actually a winner, how his tough talk and brutal talk and disgusting talk about minorities has actually been an effective political tool. So not only uh, are they saying these things more openly, but they're not denouncing this when it's... Uh, this so is what do we do? What do open anti-Semitism and, and racism. What do we do when there's a portion of the country, I mean, that will only support uh, Republican candidates who fall in line with Trump's rhetoric on minorities. What do we do? Uh, I mean, That's I, what they want. I mean, in a democracy, they have a voice. Their voice is just as equal as the voices who condemn and denounce this. Well, the good news is that the majority of the country is not like this. The majority of this country doesn't embrace that ideology. The majority of this country truly doesn't have I think uh, racism and uh, anti-Semitism at their core. I, I do think you have to turn a light on it, which we're doing here, and I think you have to continually associate that party with this kind of talk. Continually associate this party, that, that's the GOP, with I, that ideology. Now, you may be Republican, you may, I, I mean, I, I hate to paint with too broad a brush, but at some point, if your GOP legislators are not going to uh, denounce this kind of thing, then they have to suffer the consequences. Well, remember, the, the reporter specifically reached out to Republican leadership for comment on this, and they refused to denounce this type of behavior. Which is why right? the, I say so, the GOP has to own it. So, and, so I think, yes, I agree with you on that. And more importantly, you know, I, I hear you when you say you don't want to paint too broad a brush, because I do not believe that 
all Republicans are racist or bigots or, or xenophobes. I do not believe that. But you have to take action as a Republican voter if you do, do condemn this type of behavior and vote these kinds of people out of office. Yes. Right? Demand change from the Republican leadership. In the same way that Democrats have to demand more of the Democratic Party, and we talk about that and getting rid of superdelegates and making other changes in the party that we, we will discuss, but, but in the same way that we have to hold the Democrats responsible for flaws in the party, we have to hold Republicans responsible for this sort of heinous talk. It's absolutely unacceptable. Two easy ways to follow the Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.